morning and welcome to our sixth local elections debate. My name is Vuyo Mboko and tonight we're coming to you live from the Guy Butler Theatre in Grahamstown. This debate series of course is brought to you by the SABC in partnership with the University of Johannesburg. And our topic for this evening is corruption and maladministration in local government. And today to debate this issue tonight, we are joined on stage by four political parties and to my left, my extreme left is Mr. Pumulo Maswale, who is the provincial chairperson of the African National Congress. Thank you. And next to him is Mr. Zolisa Lavisa, who is stating the case for the United Democratic Movement. And to my right is Mr. Sumonyama, who is a member of parliament for the Congress of the People. And to his right, we have the Azato's regional chairperson, Mr. Lungile Dick. And of course, last but not least, is our analyst for this evening. He's the head of the media and advocacy group, the Public Service Accountability Monitor, Mr. Derek Leitz. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Thank you. <laughs> well, we'll start by giving each political party an opportunity to make some opening remarks around tonight's uh, topic. Let me start with you, Mr. Maswala, from the ANC. In the ANC's view, what lies behind corruption and maladministration in local government, and what can we do to get rid of this problem? Thanks very much. Uh, greetings first to the viewers at home, greetings uh, to the audience. From the point of view of the ANC, uh, as you would have noted in the manifesto of 2009, of the foremost priorities we identified crime and corruption as but a sketch to our society. To that extent, a number of interventions, measures have been put to fight crime and corruption. To that extent, it is a matter across society. It is a societal matter. It is also a matter that requires collaboration between the people and the various spheres of government. To that extent, the ANC is proud to say we have instituted measures to root corruption wherever it manifested itself. Thank you very much. The United Democratic Movement. Uh, thanks for having me, Vuyo. Greetings to the studio audience, greetings to the viewers at home. Our position on corruption is well documented. We will not tolerate corruption wherever it manifests itself. <laughs> service delivery. Service delivery is hampered by corruption. You have friends, you have relatives, of those in power at local government and all other spheres of government, the so-called tender preeners. That's what kills the country. Public service delivery protests are manifest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Nguanyama, what's the Congress of the People's view? Well, for your... With COPE, corruption is a cancer. It is the cancer that is destroying our nation especially the poorest of the poor because each and every cent that is taken out of the coffers of the government that cent is taken away from the poorest of the poor it is very very important for us to understand that today south africa is rated is given 4.5 out of 10 which means south africa is operating below average in terms of uh, fighting corruption. It is very, very important that Africans take the question of corruption very, very seriously. Mr. Dick Azapo's view. Let me, let me start by greeting everybody. Azapo, Azapo is an organization that uh, has got a history of fighting for liberation. And we view, we view corruption in a serious time. As an organization of the view that corruption in this country is actually embedded. It is so serious that it can no longer be taken. No, you can't take it without really taking it seriously. We're saying that it starts from the national office. It starts from the national parliament. 
You've got people in parliament who are really abusing resources, and it culminates into what you find down there. We're saying it's so, we are saying that corruption is so embedded that even those who are doing it are actually saying they're fighting it. They are doing it and fighting it at the same time. And we're saying as an organization, it does not only end there, it also sends a wrong signal about us as a black, as a black nation. It says we cannot govern, it says we don't, oh, we don't appreciate ourselves, we don't appreciate our fight, we don't appreciate our love of our country. And we're saying it's a cancer that has to be dealt with, killed. And we're saying our people need to take care and take position in that. Thank you. Well, Mr. Late, your organization has been hands-on. You've done a lot of research. You interact with all spheres of government, but also organizations and institutions that deal with corruption and maladministration. You've heard what the politicians had to say. What, in your view, lies at the core, at the heart of the problem of corruption and maladministration, especially in local government? Yeah. Uh, Boya, I'd like to throw that question back to the panellists here, quite frankly, because obviously it's nice to hear that they're all uh, anti-corruption and are, are committed to fighting it. But, you know, if you're going to fight corruption and if we're going to bring it to an end, you need to know what causes it. So the first thing I'd like to hear from all the parties are what are the causes of corruption, and particularly at local government, because then we can see what they're going to do about it. The, the second question that I'd like to pose to the, to the parties here is also what is their track record in actually fighting corruption as opposed to speaking out against it? What have they actually done to fight corruption? I'd like to hear that question. Thank you very much. Well, we are going to take a short break and viewers can, of course, uh, take part in this debate as well as the listeners who are following us on SAFM and on SABCnews.com. You can send your email or SMS to us. We'll also welcome Facebook comments on the SABC's uh, Facebook page. SMS the word elect followed by your message to 33726. The word elect followed by your message to 33726. SMS is cost 150. Our email address of course is elections at sabc.co.za elections at sabc.co.za stay with us Cleaning more than just teeth. Left, right, that flexible head really cleans around and in between teeth. Plus, the cheek and tongue cleaner knocks out more bacteria. Bacteria down for the count. Colgate 360 Actiplex for a whole mouth clean. Colgate. Recommended by dentists. You get reduced installments on great offers at these stores. Like the Samsung Star for only 109 Rand per month. Or the BlackBerry Curve for only 149 Rand per month. Or the Lenovo Notebook powered by an Intel Core i3 processor with free video camera. Or the Compact Notebook with free desk, laptop bag and Sony Walkman. So hurry to these great stores. It's the year to be with FNB. Get the first account with a zero monthly fee. Just pay when you use your account. It's perfect. Smart Account Zero. First from FNB. How can we help you? No. Virgin Money. Insurance like it should be. Kusha has always been a part of my family. Just like EAS, Imnandilengo. You see, Nick, EAS, it's so nutritious, so tasty. It has 10 vitamins to make my family feel energetic and strong. Hey, good morning, Yes, even today, after many, many years, my family, the Numano, are still going strong. You can't beat an ace taste. Namanj. And for breakfast, there is Ace Instant Porridge. Just add some hot water or milk and stir. Available in four nutritious and tasty flavors. You can't beat an Ace taste. Namanji. Uliquan. Uliquan. And this is Yes, Ned. Yeah. 
What are you doing tomorrow? Nah, nothing. You'll be in my studio at 9 o'clock. There's an extra first fee, sir. Guys, he's not coming. The decision was a difficult one to make, but we have made a decision, and the winners are... Welcome back. If you just tuned in, you're watching and listening to a special election debate. And the topic tonight is corruption and maladministration in local government. We're coming to you live from Grahamstown in the Eastern Cape. And this debate, of course, brought to you by the SABC in partnership with the University of Johannesburg. You can also follow this debate on SAFM and on sabcnews.com. Well, we did ask some of our viewers across the country, as well as listeners, as to why they are protesting. These are some of the things that they had to say. If you can remove uh, corruption qui ANC, then ANC will be dead because many people there are corrupt. First question is why is the Scorpion were removed? Um, I do think that the government is corrupt because they spend their money on unnecessary things rather than spending it on people who need toilets in the townships. They spend it on expensive cars, expensive houses. I think somewhere along the line, they got their priorities wrong because I think they're supposed to look after the people instead of their own needs. I don't think the whole government's corrupt. I think it's just certain people in the government. I think some people are really good and I think some just spend money where they shouldn't. Since the ANC took over the government, uh, everything started to be, uh, to be better in South Africa. I mean, people have got job uh, opportunities, though there isn't a lot of opportunities for people outside. I'm not satisfied with the councillors. They were they do nothing. In Motherwell, where I'm living, they just make the pavement. It's all, even that pavement, they didn't finish it. The way I look at it, the government now, what they're doing now in this day, they have that too much nepotism. Now, there are people that they do not even, even charge them. The people, the poor people. They are cracks in houses, and what they are doing about it, they are, they are fighting around it. They do nothing about it. Well, some really negative perceptions there of our country and especially of local government from our um, compatriots. Well, we're just going to show you a little graphic just to give you a sense or to put certain things in context. A total of 8.7 billion rands is the amount of money that has been classified as money that has been spent wastefully or in an improper way. And the Eastern Cape, the Eastern Cape accounts for something like 2.5 billion rands of that amount. While Gauteng uh, accounts for 1.9 billion and the Northwest 1 billion rands. And these statistics, of course, come from the Auditor General. Let me start with, with, the, with the ANC. Mr. Maswale, in the ANC's view, and if we were to pick up from um, what our analyst, Mr. Late, had to say, whose organization has done quite a lot of work um, around this subject. In the ANC's view, what are the causes thank of you corruption much, uh, and maladministration in local government? Thank, thank you for your... First, I'd just like to say that uh, with the consolidation of uh, local government, you would understand where we come from with respect to local government. We used to have separate local municipalities a process had to be undertaken to unify those and indeed we have proceeded since uh, 2000 with that consolidation of local government. It is fair to say some municipalities are doing well, others are still struggling. That is why there was introduced Project Consolidate which was meant to enhance the capacity in terms of management and skills necessary to ensure that there could be proper accountability on the part of our local state and other sect sectors within uh, the public space. Of course, beyond uh, Project Consolidate, there has been put in place the local government uh, turnaround strategy, which was again a strategy intended to ensure that the requisite capacity is sourced for local government so that there could be proper accounting for all the resources and therefore improve service delivery. That is what has been, put, has been done. Where there are instances of uh, corruption, this government has instituted special investigative units have been introduced where there are acts of corruption so that corruption can be dealt with decisively. 
the UDM group? What lies at the bottom of this problem? What lies at the bottom is KDA deployment. With disregard for professionalism, with disregard for personnel with good management and leadership skills, the people that are employed as municipal managers and even those deployed as mayors are only loyal outside of the precincts of the law of the local government. And that lies at the core of corruption. Thank you very much. Thank you for your lack of transparency at the procurement level is at the center of it. Political appointments at the civil servants level is at the center of it. Manipulation of tenders by politicians is at the center of it. The absence of strong civil society in South Africa is, is at the center of it for you because we need very strong civil servants, civil society organizations to fight and the corruption in South Africa. It is very, very important that we understand that uh, corruption it actually starts at the Municipal Finance Management Act, the management at that level, and the Provincial Finance Management Act, which is poorly managed. That's where the problem lies. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Let, me, let me thank you, Vuyo. Um, we are talking about corruption. I think, I think one of the most important questions we need to ask, did we give the people who are in power the mandate to empower themselves? And in answering that question, I would say that from a background of a revolution, a background of fighting for freedom, when our people died for the benefits that we were supposed to be getting, it is treason for people to be corrupt. It's treason for people to loot resources of the public. And the root cause of that is that there is no political dimension or political majority. And there is no sense where they know that the people that were serving, the people that gave us the mandate, in fact gave us the, the mandate out of trust. They are just there for their own gains. They are there for their own friends. Let me also say, let me also say, uh, Voyo, it is very good to, to have all these policies. Policies are there. But you've got a nature of the beast, and the beast is corrupt. If a beast is a beast, is a beast. A thief is a thief, and that's it. Thank you. Mr. Lake, as, um, as an organization that has done a tremendous amount of work in this year, does what the politicians have to say tally? We're talking now specifically about the causes of corruption. Does it tally with what you have experienced from a research point of view, from speaking to um, local government authorities, institutions like uh, your Auditor General and, 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 and other lobby groups? Yes, by and large it does. Um, I think uh, uh, amongst them, the, the, the four political parties answered, uh, the, looked at what the main causes of corruption are. None of them really spoke to their track records in fighting corruption. Um, and I would also like to ask them, because one of the issues which comes up over and over again, we've mentioned things like the SIU, the Auditor General, but what has been a real problem in the past is the lack of political will to act on the findings of the Auditor General, for example. And I'd like to ask these political parties as well, um, not only to, to, to tell us whether they have the political will or to act on corruption, but how they're going to carry that political will out in practice. Well, we will talk about that political will. Of course, in, among us here, we do have the Democratic Alliance. We also have the Unemployed People's Movement, as well as the Makana Independent New Deal. Let's take questions from some of these groupings, where they are. We do have uh, someone from the DA there. If you can please tell us who you are and pose a question or make a comment. Okay. Thank you very much for your... My name is Tolane Majo. I'm a DA councillor in Makana municipality. And I believe that we're allowed to ask only one question. And I don't think it's enough. Only one question. Okay. Um, the first question is, why should we trust the ANC in Makana municipality 
when the mayoral committee member knew about his fruitless expenditure of 56,000 rand for a year, but did, did nothing until the Dr. General fingered him in his AG's report for 2009 to 10. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry? Uh, speak, please speak directly to the microphone. All right. My name is Ayanda Kota. I am the chairperson of the Unemployed People's Movement. Uh, here in Makana, uh, last year, the Auditor General penalized Makana Municipality because they could not provide documents for the, for the expenditure that uh, amounted to 19 million rand. A year before that, they could not provide necessary document to account for the money that amounted to 26 million rand. Now, I want to say to you, this is not the only the cancer that is eating local government elections, uh, local government sphere. This matter is also a national matter. Look at your president, his relationship with the Gupta families. The man is corrupt beyond repairs. The man is corrupt to the core. Uh, the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate, we, here, in, here in Grahamstown, the unemployment rate is hovering around 70%. And in the country, the unemployment rate is hovering above 40%. So, uh, Grahamstown is the most unequal town in South Africa. And South Africa is the most unequal uh, country to in the world. You've got to make it quick. All right. In making it quick, all that I'm saying as uh, social movements, all that we are saying to these people, their only hope is that they ought to be inspired by the revolution in the Arab world. Because they must remember, none of these political parties will liberate them. Thank you very much. That Thank their liberation is in their hands. I think we've heard you. Thank you. Yes, sir, if you can please speak to the microphone directly. Certainly. Tell us who you are and pose your question or make a comment. Thank you very much, Voyo. Uh, my name is Jock McConaughey. I represent MIND, McConaughey Independent New Deal. Uh, I wish to ask a question leading on from uh, the DA, question put by the DA. The, uh, it went further. There was an audit disclaimer for the McConaughey municipality. It meant the auditors could not even begin to audit the Makana municipality. What is the ANC going to do about that, apart from holding the mayor to account for his uh, uh, fruitless expenditure or unexplained expenditure? And it goes beyond Makana, uh, Vuyo. It goes to just about every municipality throughout the Eastern Cape. And the corruption lies full, fair and square at the doors of the ruling party. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can tell us who you are and where you come from. Hi, uh, my name is Christopher McMichael. Get closer. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hi, my name is Christopher McMichael. Uh, I represent students from social justice from Rhodes University. And um, I just wanted to ask, it's very good that all the parties seem to agree that corruption is bad, which is quite a revelation, obviously. But what I wanted to ask was, um, with this idea that state resources can be looted. Last year, during the World Cup, every single party agreed that it was a good idea for South Africa to spend 70 billion rand on providing infrastructure for FIFA. FIFA walked away with three billion dollars in pure profit. So I wonder how any of these parties can credibly say that corruption is bad when they continually support the loosing of state funds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, let's, let's give the ANC a chance. I mean, two questions about Makana. Uh, why should we trust the ANC, given the Makana situation and the fact that it is, in fact, the same thing happens ev ev almost everywhere where the ANC is ruling, according thank, to thank, thank you very much, uh, Buyo. Firstly, can I say that, firstly, can I say that uh, we have in place a dispensation of regular reports that are given something that was not there in the past. Every end of the year now, there are regular reports that give reports on the state of performance of the municipalities. Now, there is a piece of legislation, again, introduced by the African National Congress, the Municipal Finance Management Act. It prescribes what should happen 
in the case of fruitless and wasteful expenditure, what you do as council, having received the report, the council then says what went wrong and what measures must be taken. It is a matter that is dealt with by the council. In this respect, the ANC will ensure that the council does what is expected of it in terms of the law. Can I deal with the next? Can I proceed to the next? I guess also the members of the public should, uh, should uh, get themselves informed properly. An assertion is made here by a gentleman that because of an alleged relationship between the president and some family, it follows that that relationship is necessarily corrupt. That's being too judgmental. Let's deal with the facts, not fiction. The, I've also referred to the question of what happens with respect to various municipal audits. What we have put in place, a, a project clean audit, where we are working supporting municipalities to make sure that they improve the management of their books, they are more accountable. We have put those in place and we are working supporting municipalities to ensure that there could be guarantee that money is allocated or spent for services delivered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we are, of course, going to take a very quick break. To our viewers and listeners at home, thank you for the emails and SMSs. Of course, if you still want to contribute, SMS the word ELECT followed by your message to 33726. The word ELECT followed by your message, 33726. SMSs cost 150 each. And our email address, elections at sabc.co.za. Elections at sabc.co.za. After the break... We take more questions and, of course, we read some of your emails and SMSs as well as Facebook. So don't go away. It's the year to be with FNB. Now you can send money instantly to any valid cell phone number and withdraw it at any FNB ATM. E-wallet, first from FNB. How can we help you? Hello, I am Dr. Aaron Mutualedi, the Minister of Health. Nursing is the backbone of health care systems around the world. However, in our country, it is bedeviled by numerous problems. Training, ethos and standards, professionalism, attitude, staffing norms, working environment, regulatory authority, and many more. Together with the nursing profession, Government is convening a groundbreaking summit of nurses. We believe in solutions by the nurses themselves. To be addressed by President Jacob Zuma, this is the Condessa of Nursing in South Africa. Venue, Santen Convention Center, date 5th to the 7th of April 2011. And the theme, reconstructing and revitalization of the nursing profession for a long and healthy life for all South Africans. This message is brought to you by the Department of Health. Welcome back to this special election debate. We're coming to you live from Grahamstown in the Eastern Cape province, which has been plagued by significant incidents of corruption and maladministration. Of course, you can follow this debate on SAFM and on sabcnews.com. We are, of course, going to allow um, political parties to uh, pose some questions, but we're also going to read some of your emails, SMSs, and your Facebook comments. But before we do that, let me allow the other three parties 
um, um, to, I mean, certain questions were, were, were posed, including, for example, whether political parties are or aren't inspired by what they see in the world today and how we can ensure that we avoid similar situations from arising in our own country. Can I start with the UDM? Thanks, sir. Uh, At the trust, the most important emphasis that governments, at local government level, in fact, for all spheres of government, would be to establish a dedicated and independent anti-corruption unit at national. The recent case from the High Court of Appeal vindicates UTCAM. In all what we've said in the past, we've said if you have no dedicated institution that does not fall under the whims of those who appoint them, you will never be able to crush corruption in this country. Well, Vuyo, I think what we see today in South Africa, especially in the Nelson Mandela Metro, where this metro is on the verge of collapse because of the high levels of corruption. In this province, the Department of Education has been taken over by National precisely because of mismanagement and corruption. Today in the world, we see what we see. Here in South Africa is bound somehow to happen in many ways. We see it now emerging in various municipalities. Precisely because people say enough is enough. In the report that now we're given, it is said that Eastern Cape is having plus or minus 2.5 billion rands that has been utilized in a very, very corrupt way. The people of this province and the people of South Africa will say enough is enough very soon. Mr. Dick, uh, thank you, Vuyo. Vuyo, allow me, allow me once again. Allow me once again to say that it is, it is interesting, as a Zappo, for instance, we, we are saying that our people fought and sacrificed for true liberation. When we decided at some point that we are not going to participate, it was purely because we disagreed with the greediness that you see now. Because we understood that people wanted to be elected into power, not out of conviction, because they love their people, but because they want to source out for themselves. One thing that I want to know, as I'm moving on, it took 17 years for the ruling party to promise. Still, nothing changes. The same happens even today. Our people are lied to every time there is an election. They are promised that it will change. However, we're saying as an organization, as one of the things you need to do, as Azapo was saying, do one great protest. Don't vote the ANC. Vote Azapo. Mr. Reid? Fuya, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to ask two, two very simple questions. Very simple questions that I'd like all four of these politicians on the stage here to like to answer. Number one. Have any of these political members of these political parties laid charges against any municipal official in terms of the Municipal Finance Management Act, the Public Finance Management Act, or the Prevention of Corrupt Activities Act? Number one question. Number two question. Just over a week ago, the National Parliament was supposed to sit to vote on a very important piece of legislation, the Municipal Systems Amendment Act. That parliament did not even get a quorum to vote on this act. I'd like to ask these political parties, did, were the majority of their national members present in parliament to vote on that important piece of legislation which affects local government throughout the country? Thank you very much. Questions to political parties. Well, let's add to those questions. Let's get a question there from the ANC. Thank you, Vuyo. May, 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 may I just say something before you even ask that question? If you don't mind, I'd like you to pose a question to another political party other than the ANC. 
Um, thank you for your... My question is directed to the oldest movement in the continent, African National Congress, sorry. Um, yes. The ANC has brought a lot of policies and, and, and legislation to deal with corruption. Uh, what is the best way to fast track their implementation so that we see concrete interventions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Question from Azapo. Um, yeah, thanks, bro. Um, I'm also going to follow suit. Unless you would have afforded me two questions, then I would pose one to Azapo, then okay. to another political party. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, to Azapo, um, I have heard all the political parties that are sitting there, Azapo included. What I've heard on manifestos and presentations and their analysis of corruption in the community in general, it's basically on the basis of what the books are saying. Little I'm saying, I'm hearing from them saying about the reflections of corruption in the community themselves. Now I want to really hear from them, Azapu in particular. Um, corruption affects not only the elite. Corruption, corruption is a cancer to society and corruption affects the poorest of the poor. One example is the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan Municipality. Thank you very much. A municipality that was there. Thank you. Process. Can we get a question from the UDM? Since the, the ANC has become the African National Criminals, and, and the UDM is the only party who wants to deal with the corruption, I've got a question for UDM. What do the UTM intake on the Kapusa forensic report, which investigates corruption and maladministration in the Nelson Mandela Metro? And when will that report be made available to the public? Because the ruling party is hiding it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Question from Pope. Uh, thanks very much, Pope. I just want to pose this question to Unda Tesmas Nguanyama from COPE. Uh, as we see in this, in this province that is the most corrupt province that is led by the African National Congress. Now, the question is that I want to check from, from COPE, how are we going to deal with the issue of catered develop, develop, de deployment? Because that's where the problem is in terms of uh, procurement in terms of tender premiers. I just want to, to check from Congressman how ready is COPE to deal with issue of educated deployment within the municipalities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you get very quick 30 second answers to each of those questions? Let me start with the ANC. Thank you very much, Julio, uh, once again. What are the measures? Uh, that we have put in place to ensure that the various policies get to be affected. The first I would like just to put across is the introduction of the Ministry on Monitoring and Accountability, Performance Monitoring and Accountability. That has led to performance agreements entered into between ministers, president, the mayors, to ensure that there's accountability on the things that ought to be done. That is in place. Secondly, we have put in place means in which members of the public are able to interact whenever they identify any measures that are untoward being done by members or agents of state, the presidential hotline and various other measures that are put in place to ensure that there is transparency and accountability on the part of those that are involved. Now, secondly, can I deal with the issue... Can I deal with the, whether the ANC government has had any officials, municipal officials or otherwise, being arrested for any of the corrupt activities? The truth is there for everyone to see. Whether it is in Alfred Nzo, where the ISU established that certain officials were involved in corrupt activities, those were arrested. Whether in any government department, be it education, be it health, there are officials that are found to have transgressed. We have instituted measures. They have been arrested. Many of them are in court as we speak. So we are not taking a tolerant view to corrupt action. Yeah. 
Uh, thanks, Vuyo. Yes, uh, we have in more than one municipality. One example is that of KSD in Umtata, where we spend money to engage the legal people to speak on our behalf because the mayor's ears were shut. The investigations are now ongoing. Also in the Mnuma municipality, we took steps in the past. We've had mayors removed from the opposition ranks, making it a point that some of the ANC for the first time listen because they don't normally listen. The UDM members, all of them were present in parliament when unfortunately the majority party, the ANC, took leave on a date when a major legislation was going to be passed. On the question relating to the communities out there, the old saying is it takes two to dance. But those that in authority, that those who are in power, have legal backing and legal guidance. Now, even if they are compromised by their families or next of kin, if they don't take the legal tune, then we will always harp and say the officials are corrupt. Thank you very much. In the Nelson Mandela Metro, very we will insist, we know that my colleague here sits in Parliament, the National Department has taken over education because they don't listen. Now the following is held. It's also going to be taken. Thank you. Thank you very much, you you very much for your... Very quickly. It is well, it is well do documented that from the formation of COPE, we express it quite explicitly for everybody to know that... Uh, we said scorpions must be reinstated because we knew that if you take away scorpions as an independent and autonomous body we are going to experience what we are experiencing currently with respect to hawks which is managed by ministerial committee number two we we say on the municipal and the management act that the member referred to Cope was present in Parliament on that day. The majority of the ruling party failed the South Africans once more. That is why that act could not be passed. We, I say to, to Cope member, on the question of uh, political appointments, it is very, very important that we understand professionalization of civil servants counts number one. You have to appoint civil servants on the basis of their capabilities, not because of their political align alliances. You have to appoint them on the basis of their qualifications. Thank you very much. Which is the problem that is experienced currently Thank in you. the government. Thank you. Well, you let me, very let me once, again, out of time. once again, on behalf of Azapo, say thank you. There, there are just two things I need to highlight before I get to, to, to answer um, the political analyst. And is, I, 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 I think this country needs a wake-up call. We need to wake up from the reality that our people died and remember that. And I also want to appreciate the fact that, like Uba Usmats today, would understand that employing your friend is wrong. But at some point it was practiced by them also. You know, the problem is in this country, if I may go on, if I may move on, the problem is in this country, you have a party that has got so much power and hegemony that it's actually abusing it against its own people. And what we're saying as an organization, what we're saying as an organization, that our consciousness, our very ideology, is the basis of who The you. fact that you're a proud black person rules you to do good things. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Well, keep on sending us your comments by SMS or email. SMS the word elect, followed by a message to 33726. SMS is cost 150. Our email address, elections at SABC. We'll continue with this debate on corruption in local government right after this. Are you prepared for the worst? 
If you or a family member were to pass away right now, is there enough money for the funeral? At Hollard, we get you and cover you and your partner for up to 50,000 Rand for burial expenses. And to make arranging the funeral easier, we now offer you access to a car. You also have the option of your family receiving up to 1,200 Rand a month for a year after the funeral. Lastly, we offer you up to 10,000 Rand to erect a tombstone as a remembrance. SMS your name or send a please call me to 082-936-7777. That's 082-936-7777. electricity wisely, to switch off what we're not using, to save as much as we can, we'll all have as much as we need. 49 million. Remember your power. It's the year to be with FNB, because only FNB offers you an account with 11,000 Rand worth of funeral cover, free. Smart account unlimited, only from FNB. How can we help you? Make sure they take their full 180 days of medicine. Don't stop even if everything seems fine. It takes every single one of the 180 doses of medicine to cure TB. TB? Take 180 to be number one okay. the latest celeb gossip? Download breaking entertainment news from Nokia's Ovi Store. Click on Nokia's Ovi Store on your phone, select the app you want, and download it. Get more from Nokia's Ovi Store. Welcome back. You're watching and listening to a special elections debate on corruption and maladministration in local government. We're coming to you live from Grahamstown in the Eastern Cape, and you can follow this debate, of course, on SAFM and on SABCnews.com. Before um, we continue with the debate, let me just read some of the emails and SMSs that have been coming through. Uh, someone here, Ernest, says, Corruption was there in apartheid where whites got a big share of the land, great jobs, nepotism. At least now there's transparency because people are exposed. Vuyo, these parties are toothless bulldogs. And then the next one from uh, uh, Morris Koloto. Kolokoto says, well, if we are the ruling party is doing nothing about corruption, maybe it's about time we give the DA a chance. I know that we'll take this seriously. Another one says, guys, our government really needs a strong opposition. Cope has failed. My hope is now UDM. Viva General Viva. Someone in Cape Town says, there are service delivery protests. Why avoid the reality and look for the ANC as a scapegoat? The metro is controlled by the DA. This is Tums. And in the Western Cape, unfortunately, all delivery uh, services are realized uh, at colored and white communities. I'm now in a shack with no electricity, no water, no toilet. That's Raymond Ntipe, uh, area manager. Um, the last one comes from uh, Bongani in Boxberg, who says, the vision of any party will be the best 
at articulation, but coming with the same strategy to play tactics with people's minds won't keep any party too long in power. On the one hand, opposition parties lack strategy to win votes. Instead of playing the blame game, they must go to Nansfield and other places, sort these small issues like water leaks and other problems that we see, and people will respond. People want service, not the DA, the ANC, the IFP, or any other party for that matter. Bongani in Boxberg. Now, I'm, coming to, I'm going to ask parties to make some concluding remarks, but before we do, I'm going to ask them to talk also about the Municipal Systems Act, which is um, an act of uh, a bill that is currently in Parliament to try and deal with corruption and maladministration. Um, if you look at this graphic that we're going to show you, there are some acknowledgments there that the ANC in particular has made, but also uh, we're looking at some of the things that this bill seeks to do. Uh, it says that it will compare, I mean, only uh, uh, municipalities to appoint only competent and well-qualified officials. It also says that officials found guilty of serious misconduct, fraud and corruption shouldn't be re-employed by any municipality for at least 10 years. The bill also says that municipal managers and, and their immediate underlings, that is, the people who report to them, shouldn't be political party office bearers. In other words, they shouldn't hold office in any uh, political party. And if you look at some of the acknowledgments that the minister uh, was, 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 was making when this debate um, 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 was being said, it is quite interesting, was some of the things that he was raising was that as the ANC, they have seen that in fact there is a level of interference in how municipalities are run, and that is a problem. They have also seen that people are appointed at wrong places. In other words, he was saying, to quote him directly, that the days of appointing bookkeepers, teachers, and social scientists as CFOs are over. He was also saying that we've made mistakes and some employees have not discharged their duties as required. And this is the acting minister uh, of uh, cooperative governance and traditional affairs, Natim Tetua, saying these things in parliament. Now, what I want to ask all these political parties is, if you, if you listen to what Mr. Mtetua had to say, if you look at what the Municipal Systems Act, uh, uh, currently a bill, is going to do, is there going to be a will? on the part of the ANC, if I start with you, Mr. Maswale, to actually make sure that those things are implemented because they sound very well and good on paper. I think the question people always ask the ANC is, do you have the will to ensure that those things are actually being implemented? 30 seconds. Well, thank you. In fact, we should commend the ANC. Minister Mtetwa is himself a member of the ANC, a minister of the ANC. That the bill is before Parliament is itself an indication of the commitment of the ANC towards ensuring that we correct the ills in local government. Thank you very much. Uh, it, is, it is unfortunate that uh, Minister Mtetwa is the acting minister who has to deal with this very important bill. He has a skeleton now that he has to unearth from his own wardrobe and uh, to trust him now is to trust him forever because he will never be able to make sure that the ANC at local government level practices what the law says. They have failed and they are still going to fail and they are also going to do what they have done because when the Scorpions started touching one of their own, they scrapped the law. Thank you very much. Mr. Manyama. Well, uh, Vuyo, I think it is, it is important for us to understand we can only judge the ruling party on the basis of its record. The record of the ruling party is that it failed to pass that very same bill in Parliament. That is the first failure by the ruling party. If you talk about the will, it means that the very ruling party does not have will. It doesn't see the expediency of passing that bill in Parliament. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Vuyo, Dick, please. Um, um, Quickly, on the, on the bill itself, I guess the reality is practice, practice and theory are two different things. And time will tell if they are true to what they are saying. But I want to say Azapo in closing. Azapo is saying to our people, for instance, we don't want waste of the provincial government. What is done away with? The waste of money, they are just enriching people. We are saying people should have a right to withdraw a councillor themselves if they want to. We are also saying last. 
that our people should not withdraw their vote. Take a decision and vote those who abused you and vote as Zappo. Thank you. Thank you very much. 30 seconds, Mr. Lake. And I would just like to say in conclusion that corruption is not just an election issue. And it's not an issue that is, can be left only to politicians. It's too important for that. And I urge all citizens in South Africa to continue the fight against corruption after the elections and till the next ones. And this is a fight that South Africans can win. You need to be involved in this fight. Well, thank you very much to our panelists, to the audience here with us. To all those people watching at home, following us on sabcnews.com, that concludes tonight's debate show. Join us next Sunday on SABC1, SAFM and sabcnews.com for the next debate in the series brought to you by the SABC in association with the University of Johannesburg. Enjoy what's left of your weekend and have a very good night. <laughs>